Hey guys, what's going on? It's David here from Scissor Explosion, bringing you guys another deck profile. This time, it's one of the decks that has started to prove itself as one of the best decks in the format, if not the best uh, shrine deck that has uh, that we've had to date, and that is Granbull. Granbull is a very powerful Pokemon that can deal massive amounts of damage for a single energy. But there is a catch. You must have an empty hand. And as you're going to see with this deck profile, there's not that's not really not a problem with this deck. There's a lot of deck thinning cards in here, and uh, well, why don't we just get on into it? Uh, be sure and like this video if you enjoyed, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll be giving away an Elite Trainer Box once we reach uh, 200 subscribers. We're nearly there, so uh, y'all stay tuned for that. Uh, like us at Facebook at facebook.com slash scissor explosion and subs er, uh, support the channel at uh, Patreon on patreon.com slash scissor explosion and without further ado, let's get on to the deck profile four copies of Snubble. It's the 70 HP Snubble. I think it's the only Snubble we have access to but uh, there may be a 60 HP one but 70 is just a little bit sturdier uh, letting it help it to stay alive long enough to get to four copies of Granbull. Granbull is an awesome Pokemon. It has uh, two attacks, 130 HP to boot, so it's one of those Pokemon that are really hard to, to one-shot, even for Zorark. Uh, it is resistant to dark, so that's a good thing. Um, so the only way Zorark's going to be getting a KO is if it has a full bench, uh, Devoured Field, and uh, Kukui. Only way. Only way it can get a one-shot on you. So... Um, yeah, it's still extremely hard for a uh, Zorak to one-shot. And then your main attack here is all out. For a single fairy energy, does 30 damage plus if you have no cards in your hand. This attack does 130 more damage. So you can hit for 160 for one energy. Choice Band make that 190. You can one-shot things like Buzzwool. You can one-shot things like uh, uh, Bacephalon GX and uh, Rayquaza GX if those are still around. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Granbull is really, really strong. Really, really powerful. The second attack, Giant Fangs, does come into uh, play sometimes. Does 110 damage for three fairy energy. But most of the time, we rely on the all-out attack. Now, we do have a 2-2 line here of Slugma and Macargo with the Smooth Over ability. This is one of the cards that is the engine for this deck. Smooth Over lets you once per turn, search your deck for any card, shuffle your deck, then put that card on top of the deck. And you use that in combination with your two copies of Orangaroo with the Instructability. Uh, once during your turn, before you attack, you may draw till you have three cards in your hand. Really, really powerful play in order to do that with Macargo. You smooth over, put whatever card on top. Maybe you need like an Ultra Ball within your hand out. You uh, put Ultra Ball on top. Use Orangaroo to draw that card. Ultra Ball your two cards in your hand away, and then there you go. You are empty on your hand, ready to destroy your opponent in the next turn. Uh, next up... I know a lot of these decks play a three three line of a Rangaroo, but I have tacked it, tacked in a one one copy of Blitzel and Zebstrika, and the reason for that is because a lot of competitive players have started taking in a Lolan Muck into their deck simply to shut down this deck because you do rely solely on a Rangaroo in order to get your draws. So uh, Zebstrika is a stage one, so he gets out of that uh, that lock that a Lolan Muck does. Uh, you can sprint your hand away and draw four cards, which is really, really good. Most of the time, you'll be able to ha draw cards to, um, to to be able to empty your hand. And you still have that Macargo in order to uh, in order to smooth over and put things on top and hopefully help you with the Zip Strike at play. And the last Pokemon we run, guys, is one copy of Ditto Prism Star because we do play uh, several Stage 2s, in the, or st several Stage 1s in this deck. Uh, this ditto can become a Granbull, a Macargo, or a Zubstrika, potentially. So, one copy of Ditto Prism Star. And that is it for the Pokemon, guys. No uh, Tapu Lele or anything like that in this deck. It is a Shrine deck, so uh, we try to stay away from GXs as much as we can. Off of the supporters, your main supporter is four copies of Apricorn Maker. To search your deck for any two cards with ball in the name, or any two item cards with ball in the name, and put them straight into your hand. Uh, that's probably your main play in this deck. Um, you want to be able to get your Ultra Balls, your Great Balls, and your Nest Balls to your hand in order to fill up your bench, start getting your Pokemon involved, and uh, start wrecking your opponent with your massive, massive all-out attacks. Three copies of Diantha. I love this card in this deck. 
Diantha works sort of like a teammate's works in the expanded format or a couple formats ago in standard. Uh, it says uh, you can only play it if one of your fairy Pokemon was knocked out during your last turn. Put two cards from your discard pile into your hand. Really, really good for getting back your Grand Bulls and your Snubbles. Maybe even getting back like Rescue Stretcher to shuffle those Pokemon into the deck. If you have some Nest Balls in your hand, you need to get out. Um, things like that, you can get back your Fairy Energies. We do play a very thin count of Fairy Energies in this deck. But uh, Diantha is there to help you get those cards back. If your opponent is foolish enough to knock out your Grand Bull, you can just come right back with Diantha. Get those cards into your hand and start wrecking them once again. Two copies of Guzma. Guzma is fairly important in this deck, but we do only we do only play the two copies because sometimes we can't always afford to Guzma in this deck. We need to go for Diantha or Apricorn Maker in order to thin our hand out. But sometimes you do have those plays where you can just Guzma and still be able to empty your hand and hit him for 160 damage. So Guzma is there. Plus we do have Diantha if we need to get those back into our hand. Uh, we do play Palpat in here as well, but we'll get that in a second. And the last supporter, guys, is one copy of Tate and Eliza. Uh... Mainly for the switching ability, it is good to have a supporter that can switch. Um, you don't want to get your Macargo stuck in the active, or your uh, your Orangaroos, or even your Zipstrika. Uh, you only really want Gramble in the active. So, sometimes we have to use the Shuffle and Draw effect. I have used it once or twice, but most of the time I use this card for switching out my Pokemon. And that's it for the supporters, guys. On to the items. We do play a hefty count of items in here. Four copies of Ultra Ball, your standard search for any Pokemon deck. Search your deck for, or discard two cards from your hand, then search your deck for any Pokemon, add it to your hand. Helps you with thinning your hand out. It's one of your main thinning cards in this deck. Then we do play four copies of Nest Ball. We do have a lot of basics and a lot of stage ones. We need to get those stage ones evolved, so we need to get our basics down as quickly as possible. And it's super searchable with your um, Apricorn Maker. And we also do play four copies of Great Ball in here. Just another searcher, and uh, it's good whenever you do land a Pokemon. We do play a, lot, a large count of Pokemon in this deck. So nine times out of ten, we'll probably hit our Great Ball. Get a free search of the deck. Free search is pretty invaluable in this game, I would say. Three copies of Choice Band, just to deal that extra damage. As I mentioned before, All Out can deal 190 damage if you have a Choice Band attached. And that's pretty good numbers. I mean, there's a lot of Pokemon that... A lot of GXs that have 180, 170 with Tapu Lele, 180 with like Rayquaza and Bicephalon. Then you got your 190, your big boys like your Buzzwell. That's really the only big one right now that you can one shot with a choice band as long as your hand is empty. Two copies of Mysterious Treasure. What? Yeah, we don't have any Psychic or Dragon Pokemon in this deck, but this card is solely used to thin your hand out. Uh, in the absence of Ultra Ball, Mysterious Treasure can fill it in the void. Two copies of Switch. Uh, like I said before, we don't want our Macargos or our Rangaroos in the active. We want them on the bench just supporting our Grand Bulls as much as they can. So most of the time, we want to have our Grand Bulls in the active. Switch can help us there. Two copies of Rescue Stretcher. It's important to get our Pokemon back if they get it knocked out, especially our Macargos and our Rangaroos. Um, we want to be able to put those back into the deck or put them back into our hand. And sometimes you want to have them in your hand all the time. So you always want to be using Ultra Ball or or something to thin your hand out. And sometimes you just have to discard like a Macargo or you have to discard a Grand Bull uh, or even Zeb Strika, something like that. And you may want to get those back if you need them. So two copies of Stretcher. Uh, stretcher. Do we do play a few one-ofs in this deck of items? One Fill Blower just to get rid of those other stadiums or those uh, those Pokemon tools that could be troublesome for us. One copy of Palpat to get back our supporters like Guzma and Diantha and Apricorn Maker. And then one copy of Fiery Flint. Yes, it's just like Mysterious Treasure. We don't play any fire energies in this deck, but it works in a similar fashion to Ultra Ball to, dis to ditch cards from our hand in order to send our hand down to zero cards. And that's it for the item cards, guys. A lot, a lot, a lot of item cards. So Garbodor may be a hard matchup for us. <laughs> Okay, on to the stadiums. Three copies of Shrine of Punishment. You could up this to four if you want, but I've found I really don't need four in this deck. I think Shrine of Punishment, um, Shrine of Punishment, it can be valuable. It's valuable in the same way that it is to Alolan Executor. Alolan Executor is able to hit hard and deal massive damage, but then it gives that little, little extra oomph in order to take out some of those Pokemon like, uh, like uh, Alolan Ninetales GX that has 200 HP. You hit him for 190, Shrine of Punishment kicks in, does the last 10 to knock it out. And then to end off the deck, guys, we have three 
six copies of basic fairy energy. Uh, six copies is fine. I have thought about seven. Um, I could probably cut a switch down for a seventh fairy energy, maybe. Um, you could cut down maybe, um, I would say Diantha, but I really don't want to cut that down. Maybe a field blower. You can cut down a field blower if you wanted to put in a seventh one. So field blower or um, switch to put in a seventh fairy energy if you like. But like I mentioned before, Diantha is theirs to get back those fairy energies if your Grand Bulls do get knocked out. So I think it's a pretty solid list. Pretty strong. I've tested it a few times against my brother. Uh, my brother, <laughs> he was running Gardevoir... Uh, Gardevoir Swampert Ninetales, and uh, second turn he got down Solgaleo, and uh, yeah, Grand Bull's weak to uh, metal, so yeah, he he swept my field. <laughs> yeah, I got him, I got him down to two prizes, but uh, yeah, that that uh, that Solgaleo was hard to get over. I no, just as soon as I was ready to to knock it out, he'd put like Max Potion or Prominence GX and heal all of his Pokemon. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, come on. But anyway. Besides Metal Pokemon, <laughs> Grand Bull has proven itself to be one of the best decks in the format. Really, really strong deck. I really like this deck. It is a mind deck. It tests your mind and your body and your soul. And uh, it's really hard to... Sometimes it's really hard to figure out what you need to get in your hand with like your smoothovers in order to figure out how to attack and how to have an empty hand. Because sometimes you'll need that fairy energy in your hand. And But, I mean, the only card you have in your hand is an Ultra Ball or something like that you got to draw that fairy energy and if you draw the fairy energy you're going to be <laughs> having to discard it with ultra ball in order to thin your hand down to zero so sometimes you have to whack him for 30 but it happens but most of the time this deck functions pretty well and you do have a lot of basics in here and usually in your first hand you draw like two or three of them and you're off to the races so um that's it. That's the deck profile, guys. Really, really great deck. I hope you try it. It's not very expensive at all. It's really, really cheap. I think the most expensive card in here, um, probably just the Secret Rare Fiery Flint's probably a little little high, maybe around 10. Um, but everything else, if you, get, if, if you get everything in standard art, probably the most expensive card in here is Shrine of Punishment. But other than that, it's a very, 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 very cheap deck. You probably pick up this deck for like less than 50 bucks. But yeah, really, really strong, really, really budget. For those of you who don't have a whole lot of money, this would be a great deck. So uh, like this video if you guys enjoyed. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And this is David from Scissor Explosion, and we'll see you guys all next time.